Thank you, Lord. Father, we acknowledge. We are here and we are acknowledging what you have done in our lives. Father, each and every person here has a story. But I know that you have touched each and every one of them tonight. They wouldn't be here if you didn't. So, Father, as we sit down, Lord, we get ready to receive the word that you have, Father. I pray that each and every person here is open to receive exactly what you have for them. I pray, Lord, that our hearts are open, our minds are open to receive. And, Father, we pray for vision tonight. We pray for sight tonight. We pray, Father, that we would begin to see the things that you are doing behind the scenes, Lord. Father, we thank you for what you've already done. But, Father, we come expecting more. Father, you've already shown us something, but we're coming and we're expecting more. So we just thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. You get a high five, fist bump. So tonight, I've been kind of wrestling with this message. And the reason is, is because I tried to... Um, uh, Sometimes it comes to me a little harsh. It, it, and, th and this is the reason why I say it is because the way the Lord speaks to me, it puts a heavy conviction on me. So what do I do? I just tend to write it right down. It's for me. But then I need to make sure that I, I, I come across correctly. I, I don't want to, uh, anybody to get all mad or, you know, walk out and I start seeing people storming out. That, that's not our, our attention here. So I, I, I know this message is from the Lord. So my prayer is, and what I've been praying is, that nobody gets up and walks out the door. No, I just. But understand, when we receive a word like this, even sometimes if it's, if it's a little hard to swallow, just understand it's okay. We're here to grow. We're here to learn, right, fam? We're, we're not here just to come in. Oh, that was a great, awesome word. Because sometimes... They hit you. Sometimes I see Pastor Joe up here, man, and Pastor Joe sometimes will get, it'll be dead silent. But let me tell you why. Because we are receiving that word. It, it's digesting in us at that moment, right? Tonight, this is my prayer. That each and every one of us receives this. Maybe we can look and maybe we can make some corrections in our life. Tonight, I have a title. Still working on this technology thing, guys. I'm still old school. I use the paper and pencils. And, but I see everybody else doing it, so I know I got to upgrade. <laughs> but tonight, I want to talk about where our sight is. So the title of the message is Open Your Eyes. <laughs> Open Your Eyes. We can see all the amazing things that are going on right now. I can see it clearly. We just came out of Wow Jam. Wasn't that incredible, you guys? Man, you know what? Give it up for our pastors, the leaders, and every single volunteer that sat to make that thing happen. That was absolutely incredible. But still, some of us can be in here today, and we can see those pictures, and it was just another event. Just a just something that took place. Just something else that we had to do on a Saturday. Right now we're looking at, we, you look at the videos, from, our team just got back from Africa. We look at those videos and we see the, 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 what's been launched out in such a short period of time, you guys. God is moving. But it's important that we pay attention. Because we can miss it. Right? So as I say, open your eyes, I want to say look around at what's going on. I'm going to go over it just really quickly. Why is having sight important? That's the first thing. I'm like, why would it? We can think of the obvious, right? Well, so I can see, so I don't trip over something, right? If my shoelace is untied, I can fix it. But this is what the definition, and it says it allows us to connect with our surrounding. It keeps us safe. It helps us to maintain a sharpness of mind. Now, knowing that, these two, these two um, keys that I'm going to touch on really quick 
it applies to both of them. The first one, the site that I'm going to be talking about, there's two types of site, and one of them is the physical site. And that is to perceive with the eyes and discern visually. I think it's pretty obvious. We all, for those, we all have eyes in our head, right? We know what it is to see right now. And we can see that, that it lines up. That us having eyesight, it helps us to keep us safe. It helps us to know our surroundings, right? The physical sight, it, it, it is great, but it's limited, you guys. It's limited. And the reason I say that is because there can be things that are going on all around. And it's happening. There's things going on all around the world right now, right? We see what's going on in, in Ukraine. We see the, the bombing of, uh, from Israel, from Iran. We see these things taking place. We see our gas prices going up. We see all these rents and everything, mortgages, everything's going up, right? Can't buy a house. But when we see these things, it can be discouraging, right? When we look at it with our own eyes in the physical, we can begin to get discouraged. We can get worried. We can become depressed. We can start to see these things and we're like, oh, my God, I don't know what's going to happen next. And I'm telling you, and this is believers. And remember, before I'm talking to anybody, I'm talking to myself. This message was for me first. So we need to make sure, to understand that there is a limitation of the greatness of our actual eyesight. When we do that, when we begin to just look in the physical, what ends up happening a lot of times, we begin to forget the promises of God. We forget, we forget the fact that we've been studying the word of God. We've been in church every two times a week for the last 10 years. And all of a sudden, some things begin to happen. And we begin to look at it in the physical. Oh, my gosh, I don't know what's going to happen. We forget the promises of God. We forget our purpose in these last days. I'm just saying. This is one of those nights I knew it was going to be quiet. <laughs> we can even be right in the, move, in the middle of the move of God and not see it. That's the scariest part. Right now, this church, the Wayworld Outreach, this is a move of God that is spreading all around the world. And I believe the reason why we are all the way over into Kenya, because we had to take a long jump because we're about to fill up everything in between. But if we do not see that, if we just sit here in church as usual... I don't even know if I want to get on a plane. What if the Russians bomb or take it down or something? What about the promise? What about your purpose? Jump on that plane. Get out to Africa. Right? Pray for some people. We need to be careful. In Mark 8.18, it says, you have eyes. Can't you see? You have ears. Can't you hear? Don't you remember anything at all? Don't you remember where Jesus brought you from? We start arguing with our spouse. Oh my God, I don't know if I can handle this. But five years prior, you guys were on the verge of divorce. You guys were beating each other up. You couldn't handle each other then. But then God stepped in, restored your marriage, and then now because you get in a fight, Oh my God, this is over. I can't deal with it. Did you not forget what he did? Open your eyes. The second one is spiritual sight. It says to see and hear the hidden things of God. This is what it is. Spiritual sight. You're like, well, do I get a new pair of eyes? No, hold on. It is to see and to hear the hidden things of God, to discern in the spirit. You see, spiritual sight, you guys, spiritual sight is having godly wisdom. It's having godly understanding. It's not like we just put a pair of goggles on and all of a sudden we see things differently, right? Sometimes it works like that, but it, not, not in this case. 
But although both of these things are from God, both visions are from God, right? Can we both agree that our physical eyesight comes from God? Right? He gave us eyes. He created us. Can we, we need to understand, too, that the spiritual sight comes from God. The difference between the two is the spiritual sight requires something extra. And you're like, what is that? It requires the spirit of God. <laughs> right? Keep it simple. It's not some magic potion we drink. It's not a bunch of things that we do. Right? It comes from God. It's given to us from God. He gives us the wisdom. So without physical eyes, we cannot see physically. Right? It just, it's impossible. Unless they came up with something new. I haven't heard about it. And in the same way, without the spirit, you cannot see in the spirit. So I'm going to give you an example right now. When I see the news, and I, and I check in. I check in every morning. I'm just seeing what's going on in the world. And I see what's happening in Ukraine. There's a war going on. It's horrible. I, I, I see that. That's in the physical. And now what happens is everybody gets on board with that. Oh, my gosh, look at what's happening. This is terrible. And it, it is terrible. But when I start to really look, and I'm looking at it, I'm seeing a, a people underneath in a subway, and they're down on their knees, and they're praying to God. They're in unity of what's taking place. Now I'm seeing something different. I'm like, praise God. Something's happening. Something's stirring up in that region of the world. That maybe if this didn't take place, that wouldn't have happened. Another example, when I, when I look at our pastor, Pastor Marco, when I look at our, uh, Pastor Joe, when I look at Pastor Robert, I, when I see, we can see them in the physical, they're men. In the spirit, what we're seeing is armored up men of God, battle tested, ready to go in the spirit. If we don't have this kind of vision, we can't see that. The reason why most of us are here, the majority of us are here, is because what they speak is the truth. They're armored up. They've been through some stuff. When I first came to the church, Pastor Marco preached, and I don't know, I don't, I don't think I've ever even talked to him about this. When I first came to the service, I was in the tent in our Sierra Way campus. And he preached about men standing up and being men. And mind you, I was 100% in my addiction in the world. I didn't want to hear it. I was like, oh, my God, here we go. <laughs> I'm being real, guys. But when he began to speak, when he, began, he came with a conviction, like he knows what it takes to be a man of God, to be a husband of God, to be a father of God, to teach his family and the ways of God, and mind you, my, my son who's nine in kids' world right now, he was like six months old. So at the time, something stirring. But when I began to see this man of God, I knew something was different. All of a sudden, it's like I had a pair of goggles that I could see something different. I thank God for that because that's what got me to get up to go to the altar. But we need to be ready to open our eyes, right? So in Luke 10, 23 through 24, it says, Then when they were alone, he turned to his disciples and said, Blessed are those, blessed are the eyes that have seen what you have seen. I tell you, many prophets and kings long to see what you see. But they didn't see it. And they long to hear what you hear. But they didn't hear it. There's so many people, and it's sad to say, I thank God every day that he gave me that day that I could just see a glimpse of the spirit. Because there's so many people that don't recognize. They don't see what's going on. They come in, they hear it, and they walk right out. They don't come back. They, oh, yeah, Pastor Mark, well, the way we're outreach, yeah, they're all friendly and, and crazy, loving, and all that stuff. Their worship's good, man. You know, I loved it. But they didn't see what we see. That's why the scripture says he was telling his disciples, blessed are those who see what you see. Because there's people that are longing to see it. 
You know what I'm talking about? It's quiet. I just had to make sure you guys were awake. So how do we gain spiritual sight? You're like, well, okay, it sounds good, Pastor. Let's, what do I got to do? What's next? It's simple. And it's so many things that we already do know. First of all, you must be born again. We want to see, we want to see in the spirit. We want to have that kind of vision with that kind of sight. We need to give our lives to Christ. Do not think for one minute that you can come to church, continue to be under the influence of something else, be reading your word up at all night long, reading the Bible. Well, no, I'm, a, I, I'm hearing from God. Let me tell you something, you're not hearing from God. I'm just saying, you're not hearing from God. That vision that's being given to you is not from God. I don't know, sometimes I keep it too real, guys. But the, <laughs> but the first thing is we must submit. If we want this, if we want to be able to see things in a different way, if we want to be able to look at our marriage, even though things may be falling apart, and to say, you know what, it doesn't matter what it looks like right now. Things are going to turn around. My marriage will be turned around for a testimony, and I'm going to show, and God's going to show off, right? My kids are acting up. The world sees them as no good. Begin to see them in the spirit. Man, God is going to turn this around. My children are going to serve God. They are going to love God. They are going to reach more people than I have ever reached. The second thing, we must pray. Because let me tell you right now, if we just think, oh, I'm going to come up here, I'm going to... I'm going to just come up here, give my life to God, and then it's going to just, all of a sudden I'm going to have this amazing visions for the rest of my life without having a connection with God. You're dead wrong. You may get glimpses here and there. Revelation of when people, you know, when other people give it to you, but that's not what we're looking for. I want to have my own vision. I want to have my own set of eyes, right? Spiritual eyes. The third thing is ask for wisdom. Scripture tells us that all we got to do is ask. And remember, what, what do we say? Spiritual sight is what? Godly wisdom. Godly understanding. We want to pray for these things. But God says, too, that if we ask for anything, if we ask for anything in his name, that he would give it to us. According to his will. And trust me, for, it, for us to be able to see in the spirit is his will. So, the next one, seek truth, number four. Seek truth. Read your word. We want to hear from God. That's how you're going to hear from God. We're going to pray. We're going to get into our word. I love doing this. When I begin to, to, to sink into scripture, and then when I start to just meditate on it, and then a couple weeks later it starts to play itself out. I'm like, Lord, I see it. He's like, that's what I'm talking about. That's the vision I want to give you. That's the sight I want to give you. But we need to be in his word. We need to be receiving it. Number five, stay clear of sin. Let's not dabble. Remember, and I know I've heard this and I know you probably heard it too. Just we, We're not going to drink a cup of water with a drop of poison in it, right? It, it messes everything up. In the same way, we want to hear from God. Some of us need to move out of our boyfriend or girlfriend's house. I'm just saying, guys. No, but God showed me they're the one. I'm not saying that they're not. But he didn't say to go jump in bed with them. Starting to wake some people up on that one. That was. But what I'm trying to say is, we shouldn't be those Christians that try to get the closest to the cliff as they can, and then say, "Lord, is this is this how can I keep going a little a little bit more?" We need to turn and run away from that thing. The further away from sin we get, the more we're going to hear God. The more we're going to see Him move in our lives. 
I don't just, I don't know about you guys. I don't just want to see God move a little bit in my life. I am not going to accept mediocre spiritual sight. I do not want to accept average spiritual sight. I want to see the dead raised to life. I want to see the blind healed. I, these are the kind of things I'm expecting and I want to see. But I have to do this. I can't dabble. I can't be tampering with any kind of sin. The minute I even gave, felt like I got close to a, the, the edge, I'm running back. And I'm like, forgive me, Lord. I know I was 10 feet away from that thing. I didn't even know how I got there. But I'm quick to run. So we say we want to hear from God. We want to see. We want to have that kind of sight. Then let's make sure sin is out. In Isaiah 59 too, it said, it is your sin that has cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. That's the, that's the scariest thing. To all of a sudden come into a relationship with him. To be able to hear his voice so clearly. And then all of a sudden it stops. But that's not the scarier thing. The scarier part is when you say, oh, he'll forgive me. I'll just keep doing this for right now. That's some of us. Let's keep it real. Whether you admit it to me or not, you don't have to. God knows. But if you come up to me and you start saying, well, I got no vision. I got this. I don't know what's going on. Well, that's the first thing I'm going to ask you. Where's your prayer, your, your prayer life like? Are you in your word? And is there any kind of dabbling in sin? Because God will speak to you. It's not, well, pastor, what do you, maybe he will. No, he will. But do not think for a minute that he's going to sit there and he's going to entertain your sin. Told you it was going to be a rough one, guys. So, being able to see in the spirit is really revelation from God. When it all comes down to it, that's what it is. It is God speaking to you. It is God revealing something to you. With all that, I know, I, why didn't you just start with that, Pastor? But well, that's what it is. And it says this in Matthew 16, 15 through 17. And then he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John. Because my father in heaven has revealed it to you. You did not learn this from any human being. The things that God is showing us, the sight that he gives us, doesn't come from anything else. The things that I have seen surpass any human reasoning or understanding. People could talk to me all day about, oh, doctor's reports, this, that, and the other. I, I've seen miracles take place in healing. Miracles to where doctors can't even explain it. You can't tell me I ain't seen it. I seen it. Whether the doctor wants to admit it or not, I seen it, right? So this is the question. What, is, what could be causing us? What could be causing us to have spiritual blindness? And we know it's sin. Sin is in there. But one of these things is our arrogance. We have to be careful that we are not so boasted up, oh, yeah, look at me. I got this bright yellow shirt on. And man, I just I walk around. I got my chest pumped out. Oh, I got the biggest Bible up in here. Arrogance. You will never truly hear from God acting like that. He might slap you in the head until you knock it off, but that's what you're going to get. The next one is a Pride. I don't need to do everything the pastors and leaders in my discipleship group leader tells me to do. I'm older than them. I've been doing this a long time. I've been serving God longer than them. Real quick way to stop hearing from God. <laughs> Distraction. Being distracted. I had, I, I've admitted to, to Pomona campus. I had this. I've had this addiction to, to, to uh, First 48, right? That detective movie thing for, for a while. It was distraction. 
if I'm not, if, I, if, if I'm sitting there watching the first 48 for like eight hours, I never did that. I never had that much time. But I'm just saying, I'm being distracted. How am I getting revelation from God from watching that kind of nonsense? Right? Praise the Lord. I've been delivered from that. But I'm saying we need to be, be careful of distraction. For some of it's a man. For some of it's a woman. I'm just, I don't know why the, the Lord just keeps going back to that right now. Somebody needs to hear it. Doubt. Doubt is another way. We are not going to hear from God. If we begin to doubt, oh, Lord, I don't even know if you could do that. He's, I love what Pastor, what Pastor Joe said, uh, the message, was it last Wednesday or the Wednesday before? Wednesday before, and he talked about that 38-year-old on the couch, right? And he was talking about the man that was sitting next to the pool that didn't get, you know, come on. I would have been banging everybody. I'm not staying here for 38 years. But what ends up taking place is we can sit back and we can begin to just doubt. I don't even know if I make it to that pool, if, I, if I'm even really going to be healed. Because let me tell you what. If he was seeing people and he really truly believed, he would be frantic to get into that pool. But doubt will hold us back. Ignorance. Following blind guides. And I want to touch on that just really quickly. When we follow blind guides, what really happens is it's a form of laziness. Because what happens is you're not picking up your word for yourself. I love what, pa man, I, Pastor Mark way back in the day used to tell us this. I know he still does. He, he says this. Don't take my word for it up here. Pick up your Bible and read it for yourself. If you're not doing that and you're just coming into this room just to get fed for Pastor Marco, then better check your, your, your walk. Right? Laziness will stop you from hearing from God, seeing so all of it, all of it comes down to is sin. So every single one of these things is an excuse. Every single one of them. Because it's not something that can't be overcome. Right? But it's something that we hold on to. We latch on. Oh, well, this is just the way God made me. All prideful and arrogant and lazy. <laughs> Tell you right now, that's not what God made you for. And this scripture I was debating on for a minute, guys, but I'm going to hit it. Isaiah 44, 18. Such stupidity and, and ignorance. So he's saying this. Such stupidity and ignorance. Explanation point. Their eyes are closed and they cannot see. Their minds are shut and they cannot think. You don't have to stay that way. If you're in this room right now, I'm not calling you stupid. But what I'm saying is if you cannot see this, jump on board. Say, what do I got to do? I don't want to remain blind. Some of us have chosen to stay in the dark. Let's be real. We've been conditioned to live in the dark. When we come out into the light, the truth is revealed to us. All of it, we're squinting and we're like, oh, no, I'm going to go back. It's uncomfortable to us. But if we stay in that position, we will never grow to the next level. We stay stuck right where we're at. And guess what? We're dragging a bunch of, if you've got kids, if you've got grandkids, they're all coming right along with you. Living in caves, in the darkness. Look like a bunch of vampires. What is that? Pasty white? I don't know. But we need to make sure that we're not closing our eyes. So that we can stay comfortable with our compromise. We can't look around and say, just, uh, I, see what it, I see what the word of God is saying, but I do most of it. I don't cuss anymore, but I still drink. I don't hit my wife anymore, but I go out on her. God's working on me for the last 10 years. I don't know, I, I just... Just what the Lord said, guys. Don't throw rocks at me. <laughs> so there's this old saying, ignorance is bliss. Have you heard that saying? Ignorance is bliss. And what, the, what you're saying is that if I don't know about it, if I don't know about it, then it's not really there. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about it. 
That was me. I don't know that want to know the word of God. We don't pick up our Bibles because we don't want to be confronted with our sin. Let's be truthful. And we all know when we're doing bad. We don't need the Bible to tell us. But the reason we don't get in the word is because we don't want to see it again. We get comfortable that way. But I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter if you believe that it's not real. Hell is real. Heaven is real. God is real. Jesus Christ dying for our sins was real. Whether you open your eyes to it or not, we are in the end times. We don't have time to play around. Too many of us, are we're squinting. Oh, I'm out in the light and it's really bright. I'm going to do the very minimum. God has called you. Open your eyes and get to work. We start saying things like this. Oh, a discipleship group? Oh, my gosh, i got to put another thing on my plate? You guys, I'm not condemning anybody. In the beginning... They used to be called C groups. I was there. I worked 12 hour days, six days a week, had a family, and I could have every excuse in the world. But the day that we began to open up and disciple men, it was a game changer. My eyes were open. This is my purpose. Now everything revolved around that. But my eyes needed to be opened. So as we close out, you guys, as we close out, there's a scripture that comes to mind. And when I'm reading this, this scripture has been like the, the top scripture, but I wanted to save it to the end. It is found in 2 Kings 6, 7, 6, 15 through 17. And it says this, when the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what are we to do now? The young man cried to Elijah. Don't be afraid, Elijah told him. For there are more of, uh, on our side than there, there, than there is on theirs. Then Elijah prayed. Oh, Lord, open, the eye, open his eyes and let him see. Explanation point. The Lord opened the young man's eyes. And when he looked up, he saw on the hillside around Elijah was filled with horses and chariots of fire. You guys, we are a church that needs to be praying like Elijah did for our families. We are a church that needs to be praying like Elijah did for every single person outside of these walls. For the city of San Bernardino, for the city of Pomona, Kenya, Compton. This is what God is looking for. You need to tell them what you see. We don't come in agreement. Anybody starts calling me and they know it. I get calls all the time. And you start telling me, oh, well, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. I'm like, okay, let's go to the word of God. We're going to start praying and declaring that. Because why? Because I see something different than what you see. And I pray that there's going to be a time when God opens your eyes so that you can see it too. This is what we need to be praying over our cities. Lord, let them see what we see. That they don't have to continue to stay in the same cycle that they're in. That's been on generation after generation after generation of gang banging, drug use, pornography. It doesn't have to be that way. You can get set free. And when they start to think, well, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. I'm surrounded. We say this one. There is more on our side than there is on theirs. We serve a God that is greater than anything that you're coming up against. We need to be the ones, church, we need to be the ones that pray for our city. We need to be the ones, as of right now, we need to be the spiritual eyes for our cities. If we don't do it, who's going to do it? They stay stuck. They stay bound. They stay fearful. They stay hopeless. They stay stuck in their addiction. And all the while, we have the vision. We see it. But church, it takes every single believer, every single, I'm gonna, not even just a believer, every single disciple of Jesus Christ to stand up and say enough is enough. 
we have vision, we have sight, we're going to share, we're going to spread this thing. Amen? All right, all right. So you guys, anybody, I'm praying that you guys receive something tonight. Amen? So as we go to close out, you guys, this is the prayer. We're praying that the eyes would be opened in these cities. That they wouldn't just see the wayward outreach marching around City Hall. They would not just see a, a, a great event taking place, getting free haircuts. But that they would see the Spirit of God moving in their city. And when they do that, they want to be a part of it. You guys, what I saw at Wow Jam, I saw an army of my brothers and sisters. I saw an army come together to make that happen. But that's what it takes. So my, call to my, my, my prayer tonight is that maybe you're sitting here and you're saying, man, you know what? I don't have that kind of sight. I don't have that kind of vision. You don't have to stay that way. You don't have to go and, and I'm, we're not going to spit on your eyes and rub mud on them or anything. But we want to get you started. And it starts right here. Right here at this altar. God made it so simple for us. If you say, man, you know what, I, I just, I'm in a place right now that I cannot see the, 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 the sun through the cloudy days. Right? I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. There's so much going on around me. I become fearful. I become depressed. I'm telling you right now. Come up. Receive a touch of God. Surrender your life to him. One more call is, I know there's some people that maybe this is you tonight. And you say, man, you know what? I'm here. I grew up in the church. Maybe you've been coming here for years. I don't know. I haven't started a, a discipleship group. I haven't gone out to outreach. I haven't done any of these things. I show up and, I, and I'm a pretty good person. But I'm just not doing everything God has called me to do. And in fact, I've, I've strayed away from God's purpose in my life. I've lost vision. I used to be full of vision. Now I've lost it. It's okay. God's not asking, requiring you to do a bunch of things. He's just saying, come back. Let's get reconnected. This simple. So before we go into prayer, can I have everybody just go ahead and stand up? If that's you tonight, and you're in one of those categories, I'm going to count to three, and I'm going to ask you just simply, just very simply, just to raise your hand. You say, you know what, that's me. I've never had that kind of relationship with God. I can't see anything good in my life, but I want to. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. And when I ask you to raise your hand, don't let anything keep your hand from going up. And if you've strayed away, if you've walked away, not, not even, I'm just saying turned away from God. And you're saying, you know what, I need to get back on track. I need to hear from God like you're talking about. Then I'm asking you to put your hand up as well. I'm going to make one more call and I feel it. And I do this Pomona all the time. How many of you guys got crazy family members? Okay. That's it? Man, I, I put both my hands, I got all kinds of crazy family members. But I want you to understand something. For every single one of you that put your hand up, I was that crazy family member. I was the worst in my family. On both sides, all bad. But I got prayed for. Somebody loved me enough to pray for me. And I'm here today. Never, ever, ever count anybody out. Oh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna stop praying for that person. They just, they're, they're no good. They ain't never gonna change. That was said about me. There is power in prayer. 
You want me, you want to ask me how do I know that somebody truly loves me? It's not because they give me money. It's not because they buy me things. It's because they pray for me. The greatest gift that you could do for anybody is to pray for them. So as we go ahead, and, I, and I'm going to ask you right now, I'm going to count to three really quickly. And if that's you, you say, I want a relationship with God right now. I want you to put your hand up when I count to three. And if you say, you know what, I need to be recommitted, I'm going to count to three, put your hand up. One, two, three. Don't let anything keep your hand down. I see your hands. I see your hands. Is there anybody else? I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. Let us have the honor of praying with you guys. If you just come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. We're not going to make this long. Just come up. Allow us to pray for you. This is our greatest honor, to come alongside and pray with you. The Word of God says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that you will be saved. We are believing there is people being touched right now. Even if you didn't put your hands up. For those of you that had crazy family members that they need prayer, come up. We want to come into agreement with you. There is no greater way to show love than to pray for your family members, you guys. Come up, come up, come up. Give them a hand, you guys. Give them a hand. You know it, ta it takes a lot to come up here. I'm proud of you, brother. There anybody else? I don't want, we don't want to just fly through this moment. This is what we are set up to do. This whole building, this whole worship team, everything, these chairs are set up for this moment. And if that's you, when you're still sitting in your seat right now, and I know there's somebody out there, the Spirit of God's telling me there's somebody here right now that needs to be up here. If that's you, just come up. Man, we did all kinds of foolish things in the world. Right? And then all of a sudden we ask you to walk 25 feet and all of a sudden it gets really hard. But this is the greatest decision you'll ever make by far. Praise God. Proud of you guys. Proud of you, sister. I know it takes a lot. The Spirit of God is moving right now. There's people being touched right now. There's blind eyes that are opening right now. Even as I'm speaking, people are seeing something different. They're getting a new hope. There's a new vision that's taking place right now in their hearts and in their minds. Don't walk away. Don't walk out of this place without receiving everything that God has for you. That would be a shame. So if you didn't make it up here right now, the altar's full, but we, we know there's, they, we can squeeze people in. But if that's you out there and you're saying, you know what, man, why didn't I go up there? Why didn't I go up there? I want, please, I want you to say this prayer right where you're at. Say right where you're at. But please, please come up. Let one of our altar worker counselors know. And let us pray for you. Do not leave this place. If you're holding on to something, you guys, if there's something that you're holding on to and you walk out the door, I love what the, that, that old t-shirt saying of Pastor Marco, Pastor Robert's dad said. He said, if you leave here hungry, it's your own fault. If you leave here with your baggage, it is your own fault. We're here. We love you. So as we go ahead and pray right now, you guys, everybody, just repeat after me. Eyes, eyes closed, head bowed. Father, forgive me. I know I've sinned. I know I've turned away from you. But Lord, I ask for your forgiveness. I repent of my sins and I turn to you. I pray that your Holy Spirit will fill me now. Fill me now. Fill me now. I don't want to leave here the same way. I am expecting change. I expect new sight. I will no longer walk the same. I will no longer talk the same. But I am made brand new. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. In 
Jesus' name we pray. Amen.